Hey everybody, it's Sharon here. I'm from iRestore Stuff and I'm from Australia. So welcome to another Essential Stencil Live. And today we're going to be working on this chair right here. So we're gonna be actually using stain to stencil. So I don't know if you've done that before, but I'll be showing you a little bit about stain too. So fun facts for today. Right now I'm just gonna share this to my page so I can make sure I do that. So why don't you do that too? There's a little share button there as we're going live to just share it to, or tag a friend who might want to learn more about stenciling or stains, all of that kind of thing. So I hit the share button, whoop. Share it to my I Restore Stuff page and post. And there we go. We are good to go. So share it with your friends. And um, I'll just pop that down here. So today um, we will be using Fusion Mineral Paint has these stain and finishing oils. And they come in a few different colors and I think I've only got one missing there which is the natural and the, the clear version. That, let me just bring that one over so you can see. But I thought that on this chair, so here is the basic overall idea for this chair is to use it as say an entryway, an entryway piece, something like that, that you can welcome someone into your home and I'm gonna be using this stencil here that says it's so good to be home. So I thought it'd be a fun idea to put the home right here using the stain and also using this up here. We've painted this and pre-painted it in Fusion Mineral Paint color Sterling. So we're gonna put it's so good to be and then home down here on the base of the chair. So to prepare, what we do first is to paint the base which I've done there, but I haven't actually stained the seat and I've unscrewed it, so don't panic, it's not a wonky chair. We've actually unscrewed the base <clears throat> Let me just give you a sneak peek, shall I, of what I did yesterday. This was me testing out all the different stains and the different colours to see what might go well. So I've decided on this driftwood colour because it actually shows the stencil up a little bit better than the cappuccino. We've got the ebony, which is a black, so that's a gorgeous stain. And then this is golden pine. So on the actual seat itself, you'll notice that it is really weathered. We've sanded it back as much as we could. And there's still a little bit of gray, weathered, old, weathered look in here. So that's why I thought that driftwood color, the grayish wash color would go really well with just uh, making that blend in. Welcome Celia, how are you today? I'm great. <laughs> um, she's gonna be answering any questions. So if you do have any questions, let, uh, let us know in the comments and we will do our best to answer them for you. And I'm Sharon, if you've just joined me, I'm Sharon from I Restore Stuff and we're gonna be stenciling with stain today. Now, important thing is to have your disposable gloves because staining is an oil-based product. So it's a little, can get a little bit messy and not come off your hands as nicely as water-based products. So the cleanup for our stain and finishing oils is actually, well, in Australia, we call it metho. In Australia, we end everything with O, don't we, Celia? <laughs> It's actually methylated spirits, but I believe it's called mineral spirits or white spirits, something like that. Mineral spirits. Mineral yeah. spirits in the USA and possibly Canada. And they probably call it something else in the UK, Europe. So if you're from the UK or Europe, I'd love to hear from you and what you call this stuff. We just call it metho. Same as we call, say, the rubbish man or the garbage collector, the garbo, or, you know, we add all these O's on the end, even nicknames, don't we? Mm. So people's, Stephen would be Steve-O, you know? It's just an Aussie thing. Anyway, so I'm gonna show you how to stain this today using the driftwood, but we need a, also a little trusty can opener. And I've kind of swirled it around. You don't wanna shake it up too much because you'll get bubbles in it. So we're going to lay down a base first for our stencil. So before we do stenciling, we're just gonna learn a little bit about staining. And I'm going to use a stirring stick just to make sure that any, that, that it's all, all the uh, ingredients are really thoroughly mixed. Similar to when you mix a can of paint, sometimes you can feel those, see the little lumpy bits at the end of the stick there? Those are the bits that we need to really stir in well. So let us know where you're tuning in from, where you're watching from, love to know. 
And stay tuned because the stencil set that I'm using today will be offered. There'll be three prize winners today. At the end of the live, we'll announce who those winners are. Celia gets the wonderful job of picking the winners for our prizes. Yes, yes, the pressure's on. Um, and I'll just show you again, we're gonna use this It's So Good To Be Home, which also comes with Together Is My Favorite Place To Be. Isn't that gorgeous? So it comes in a set. So we'll share the links with you and Essential Stencil will be sharing a whole complete supply list, um, which I'll mention later on, and they'll have that ready to go soon. So, I'm gonna use a cloth to apply this. Now what I'm gonna do is just use some, a lint-free cloth. Why don't I just use this one actually? And it's just t-shirt fabric really is one of the best things to use for, to be lint-free. The other thing I do have though is applicators which are microfiber and you can use the microfiber applicators as well. They've got a foam insert in them. But for today's purpose, just gonna use this little cloth and I'm just going to put a little bit on there. You can brush this on and that will get into the grooves as well or you can just wipe it on. So we'll just show you, maybe I'll show you both, wiping on and brushing on. So with brushing on, I feel like it could get into, it could spread it a little bit faster. But I do feel like you waste a bit when you're brushing it on because at the same time as I'm rubbing, on, rubbing the stain on, it gets, the penetrates into the pores of the wood, into the grain of the wood, and it's wiping away any excess. So don't forget to get the edges, which is often the end grain. I want to get all around there. Has anyone used stain before? If you and haven't, let people us People would like to know what colour you're using again. This is called driftwood. So it gives it a lovely grey wash kind of look. And it's also helped, I hope, we'll see what happens. I hope it's going to hide that weathered grey look. This chair I got off Facebook Marketplace, which is a really fun place to find really cheap furniture. If you, I, that's one thing I do, is restore furniture. Take old pieces, make them new again. That's been my passion for a while now. Been doing this for about, it's about eight or nine years, I think. I have to add it up. Okay, so right now we're going over this weathered bit in the center. And I think it is, in fact, it is covering that up nicely. Now, when I use, I'm going to look for a brush in a minute, but when I use a brush, I want to use an old brush that is not highly precious to me. So I'm not going to be using my really good Stalmeister brushes or Klingon brushes that I love to use for my painting furniture. I like to use, leave those for using with my water-based products. I'm just going to duck over to my trusty tool cupboard. Find... Just finding an old chip, uh, chip brush that's like a workshop brush. And I'll show you how, so we've done that with a cloth, just rubbing it on, a lint-free cloth. Now I'll show you staining using a brush. Let's have a go at that. And you'll see that it sits on the surface a little bit more. Can you see how much darker that is looking? But the clue is we've got to wipe off the excess. So we brush it on. And once again, this is the color Driftwood. Fusion Stain and Finishing Oil. And we will have that on the supply list. And I believe that any time now, if you type in the word list, that you will be able to be sent a supply list of all the products that we'll be using today with convenient links for you. So see how that's coming on a lot darker. So what's happening right now, and if you, if you get at a certain angle, I don't know if you can get that there, Marty. Marty, my husband, the cameraman, give him a big love, send him hearts. He's doing a fantastic job. Always loves to help his wife, don't you, babe? <laughs> That's the camera nodding to you right now. Um, so you can see a little bit of glistening here, but you can see it almost looks like it's drying in certain patches. Where, so it's either sitting on the surface or it's really, you can see where it looks like it's drying, it's actually penetrating the surface. Before we keep going, I'm going to grab this cloth and wipe off the excess. So you can see, let's see if there is any difference in brushing on versus 
wiping it on. And I think it does look a lot darker on this side. What do you think, guys? Let me see. Darker, yeah. So maybe that means I'm going to have to brush the other side as well. Um, let me know if we've got any questions about staining. This one's got a, it's an all-in-one stain and finishing oil. So this is the finished product. You don't have to go over it with another coat of something else. Um, and there's lots of lovely colours, as I showed you before, with the cappuccino and the golden pine. We've got a white, which is, gives you a lovely whitewashed look. I feel like I've got two different sides here now. Let me see what happens when I brush over on this side, just to darken that up a little bit. You can see lots more tutorials that I've done using furniture over on my iRestore Stuff blog at iRestoreStuff.com or on my YouTube channel. There we go. Maybe it's just the wood was, the grain was different in that area because it's, you know, it's a little darker there than other places, but I'm happy with that compared to what it was before. Yes. Do you use Questions? a wood conditioner? Oh, I haven't with this, and I haven't actually used a wood conditioner, but I've heard that they're really good for um, just evening out that grain, so getting less patchy look. So, great idea. Whoever commented about the wood conditioner, very good tip. Trying not to show my underneath there. There's my experiment, as I showed earlier. <laughs> earlier. Um, so, yeah, very important to get the end grain here. What's the dry time? Oh, I'd have to see that. Now, I think it's 24 hours or something like that. Unless you live but in Brisbane, in which case it's about 10 minutes. Yeah, it's very warm and dry here at the moment. Looking, We're praying for rain, aren't we, in this neck of the woods? Um, anyway, so dry time is different than curing time, so it's important to let your pieces cure, whether it's a water-based paint or an oil-based paint and 21 to 30 days is a good amount of curing time. Curing just means that the water and the moisture is evaporating out of the product to harden it, similar to when you get your nails done, ladies, when you've got your um, nail polish on. The longer you leave it, the harder it becomes and the harder it sets. So there we've got a nice driftwood grey. Now this is the chair that I'm painting it on. So I thought that the grey tones mixed well with the grey finish on there. Just got to finish this last little side here. But that's applying really nicely. Again, the cleanup for the oil-based product is, what did we say, metho for Australia? Methylated spirits over here, but it's called mineral spirits. Mineral spirits probably where a lot of you are from. Has anyone typed in where they're from today? I love to hear where people are Oh my gosh, from. yes, all the time. Ohio, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Canada. Two people from Brisbane. Hello, Yes, ladies. yay, Brisbane people. Ooh, Hi. Rebecca and Belle, Florida. Thanks for joining in. Oh my goodness, Washington, New York, Tennessee. There we go. I'll show you that while I'm doing everywhere. the back here. Amazing. Tennessee. Kansas. I lived in Nashville, Omar. Tennessee once. Fun Carolina, fact. Clinton. You lived wow. in Tennessee. Nashville. Oh. Yeah. Did for you probably sing? Probably about nine months. I did, did you sing? I did, but that's for another day, another time, another place. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to sing right now. She's Sorry. <laughs> Thank Sedalia, you. Kentucky. Wow. We were coming said? in from all over the place, guys. Fred so good to Virginia. So May. good to have you. Yep. PA. Okay, we got the back of the seat. And I think I've wiped it off everywhere else. Remember to wipe off the excess. So you don't want any of the oil-based products sitting on the top. So I'm just using a lint-free cloth or you can use a microfiber applicator. Okay, so what we want to do is to have that dry as much as possible before we put our stain stencil on. So really, I mean, if all things were in a perfect world and we weren't live, <laughs> trying to get things done all in the amount of time that we need to, um, I would be leaving this for 24 hours or whatever. So, but we're going to let it dry for a little bit. And while I let that dry, I'm going to be working on the chair back and stenciling part of our stencil uh, on there. So let me set aside these finishing oils. 
And I'll set aside this to let that dry. And we're just going to pop this up here. Yep. And I'll show you what we'll do on there. So um, I would just usually just pop that in a little jar of methylated spirits, mineral spirits, and let that sit there. And But I'll do that after. I can actually take my glove off now because it's annoying me. <clears throat> and um, all right. So on our stencil, we're going to be using the this part here. It's so good to be, and then we're putting home on the base of the seat. So I want to make sure that's in the right place. And the colour I'm going to be using for this, because I'm going to use the ebony stain, the black stain, for the... Um, oh, thank you so much for that. Pop that on. Thank you. Just popping a little bit of that in there. All right, we're going to be using the ebony stain over the driftwood stain for the stencil here. But for this one, I'm going to be using Fusion's Coal Black, just matching in the same similar tones to what we've been using. And I'm going to use my little tiny uh, round brush here. It's a Klingon Round 12. Now, I love using Klingon and Stalmeister brushes for stenciling, for painting my furniture. But what I do want to do is just make those bristles a little bit shorter to make it a little bit less flexible for when I'm using it for stenciling. So that's just one of my little favourite tricks that I like to do. Get our trusty newspaper or brown paper, whatever you like to use, to brush off the dry dry off the brush. So I just need to use this tiny little bit that's in the lid. I've hardly got anything on there. And I'm actually going to dry that off. Now, I don't know about using painter's tape here. We could try it, but it seems like I'm just going to have to hold it really still and eyeball the centre of these words here. It's so, and I'm going to leave it sort of to the left. That way I don't have to think about centering all the words that I want to put across the top here. If you've just joined us, I am doing an experiment. <laughs> no, really, I've thought of this creative fun idea, <laughs> let's put it that way, of choosing this chair and using it for, say, an entryway piece or just a fun conversation piece that you could have. Now, the other thing I might want to do is to cover up the second lot of words while I'm stenciling the top words because you don't want your brush to be stenciling that there because we're going to put those words beside these words. Got it? Does everyone get me? Put a little hand or a heart or something. Wave at me <laughs> if I'm making sense. All right, so I've got my brush all dried off. And here we go, just doing a little twirly-whirly motion on the paint. Now, this paint is fully dried. I'm just going to add a little bit more to my brush and dry it off. And the reason we want to dry off the brush a bit is I find that less is more on the brush. You can always add more, but it's really hard to take off if that paint's too much on there and it bleeds underneath the stencil. You have a little bit of trouble getting that off, especially for our little words here. I love stenciling. All right, don't forget to stay tuned because we've got prizes and this is a prize pack for today. Three winners, three lucky winners at the end of our live. I'm going to lift that up just to show you. There we go. Success with that one. So it's so... Now I'm going to try and space this so that it's looking a little bit like, you know, the right distance apart. And I'm not much of a get the ruler out person. You are, aren't you, Celia? You like to have things precise. You like your rulers and measuring. I I'm like just going to do the balance. I know. Well, but I'm going to be off balance. balance. I'm going to stick it all to one side. How's that dealing for you? The abstract look is great. Thank you. All right. So it's so good. I reckon that's about right. The G kind of goes down there. <laughs> oh dear. Yes. It's about the right spot. The good thing is if it's in the wrong spot, you can just redo it. You could, couldn't you? But I hate redoing, seriously. I yeah. don't like redoing. So um, how do you seal it? Do you seal your stain? Oh, how do you seal the stain, you mean? Or the... 
paint? The stain, because this question came up earlier. Oh, okay, earlier. Oops. Yes, so with the stain, it's an all-in-one stain and finishing oil, so that is your end product. You don't need to seal it. It's got the finishing product in it, um, the oil-based, I don't know, I want to call it varnishy thing, but it's a matte finish, so it's not glossy or anything like that. And it's a lovely Do you ever use finish. a sponge? Um, I have star. used a sponge before. Actually, I'll show you. We're not going to be using a brush for the stain stencil, so stay tuned for that. We're going to be using something different. Um, you could, yeah. I know a lot of people use a sponge, and just I haven't had a lot of success with it. I just like the, instead of the um, spongy, stipply look that sometimes can happen, I prefer just that um, solid more solid finish, if that, is that a better word? I don't know. And sometimes when I'm doing signs, especially, I will like to use this swirly-twirly method, and it actually gives a rustic look, so it's not quite finished, if you know what I mean. It's not really solid. It doesn't look like printed. Right, yeah. I think that's not so printed. Right. And could you just explain your brush again for the people oh, who just got on? Oh, I've got a rubber band on the end of it. Mm. <laughs> um, that's my trick to just shorten the bristles a little bit so that it's not so flexible. So with a, a brush with long bristles, if I'm trying to swirl, it can kind of creep under the edges and feel a bit, it, it just gets the paint a little bit more concentrated into the one area. And I don't know, everyone just, you experiment, don't you? And you find your best method for doing things. And this is just the best one that I've found for me. But I love watching some of the lives that Essential Stencil has going on and there's so many different methods to stenciling and it's so good because we have a variety of ambassadors for Essential Stencil that are really showing a whole bunch of different ways that you can do things. It's not just the one method and you find the way that works for you and go for it. It's all about experimenting and practicing. So there we go. It's so good to be and then we're going to put home on the base of the chair. So with that one, you could do a couple of things. Is it, is it straight, Celia? You're giggling, you're giggling. But you're not, are you giggling at a comment? It's a little bit up there, isn't it, you know? No, it's perfect. Okay, guys, stop perfect. looking, stop looking. It's perfect. And yes, our lettuce is cheap at the moment because it's summer. Thanks for that comment, somebody. <laughs> That's why I was giggling. Are your lettuce? <laughs> they can see the prices on the newspaper oh. there. <laughs> <laughs> Our lettuce. Yes, well, Actually, worry. this Everything is from is super yeah, expensive. that's from September. So that's probably there we no go. Rain, the prices no of fruit and veggies in Australia. But what's the meat? It's eighteen dollars a kilo. So I guess you got to change kilos to pounds and figure that out. Yeah, eighteen dollars um, for two pounds. I think I've got is a little spot on meat. the top of that chair. But what Sadly. I can do is just sand that gently, Love our and meat. it'll be fine. Mm. Anyway, enough about the price of. Yeah, vegetables. We've got this great stain that yes, comes from. <laughs> we've got this great stain that's happening here. So it obviously, it hasn't dried properly and it will probably have a little bit of a, um, you know, if you sat something like a paper on top of that for a while and pressed it in, it may have, because it's an oil-based product, it may have little oil showing through. But right now that's going to be great for using for our stencils. So we remember that the stencil is going to go the chair goes this way, so our stencil has to go up this way. And that's where I'm going to place it. Got the idea? Don't forget that all of these products will be on the supply list. So Essential Stencil will pop that supply list in the comments. Go there and you'll see that. And you'll be able to write down, I think you type in the word list. Right, guys? And then you get that sent to you, which is amazing how technology does that and they just know. Okay, I'm going to use my, look, reuse, I'm reusing the painter's tape. Watch me. Let's see how this goes. Okay, because I just want to cover up these words right here because I don't want to stencil over that. Okay, so I've, I've kind of eyeballed this. I've got more of that hanging over there, but I really feel like from the chair to there and that edge to there, we're in the centre. Am I'm I right, Marty? I'm getting to you, aren't I? No, I'm asking the cameraman's opinion. Yes, honey. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good husband always <laughs> says yes, He always honey. says yes. All right, so maybe I'll try a little bit of painter's tape on the corner of this one too, just to make sure. Might as well use up the one that's nearly used up. Somebody says they yes. spent nearly two years in Sydney. Where oh. are we? We're in Brisbane. So I'm in Brisbane, Indeed. Queensland, which is way north 
uh, above Sydney. But it's about halfway down the coast of Australia, wouldn't you say, kind of-ish? Yeah. Queensland's all that top right section. Okay, so to go over this, we're going to be using the stain ebony. Because we've used the black on here, I'm gonna go with the black stain. So the stain really just penetrates the wood so you can still see the wood grain. So you can see there, that's the driftwood. I'm looking for my little can opener here. And if you remember, that's uh, Fusion Stain and Finishing Oil, and it's an all-in-one stain and finishing oil. I'm just going to use my stirring stick. And we just make sure, again, that we're stirring the bottom of the jar, stirring it round and round like you would paint, just to make sure all the ingredients are all evenly mixed in so we get a nice even coverage. That one doesn't have a lot of... Uh, it doesn't have any lumping down the bottom. I can feel it. Feeling great, feeling all mixed in. All right. So, put the lid on this. <clears throat> now, honesty time. I only just experimented with this last night. Oh, that's a pretty pattern. Purple. It's going to be black now. I uh, experimented with this last night and I did have a little difficulty in just making it not bleed under. So you need to practice on this. Don't practice on the chair that you're going to be using or especially Granny's antique piece of furniture. When you're doing stenciling, it's always a great idea and especially a new technique. So for me, this was a new thing. I hadn't stained, I hadn't stenciled with stain, this stain before. And because it's an oil based, I found that it easily bleeds underneath. So. The tip that I've found, and I'm just gonna use, honestly, this bit on the stirring stick, I really don't need a lot. So we've got that bit from on the stirring stick and I've put it on my cloth and I'm just going to release all that onto the paper. And look, it's still coming off, but I want hardly any because if I start with a lot, it, I know it's going to bleed under there. I just want really hardly any because I can always add more on, can't I? can always add more, it's hard to take it off. Less is more, less is best. And what I'm gonna do is just dab and then I'm just, I'm just kinda feeling my way. I'm really scared, can you tell? Really scared it's gonna bleed under. No, but look, it's not. All right, so I'm just going to rub, and this is kinda going with the grain a little bit, but we're just gonna rub along the stencil lines there. And you can see the stain starting to take the wood, and a reckon. question that keeps coming yeah. up, but I waited for the right time, right. was <laughs> getting the stain off the stencil afterwards. Oh, yeah. Does so the, the clean-up is the same uh, as you would when you're cleaning your hands. And I should be using a glove right now. Let me just do that because I hate getting stain on my hands. And, yes, it's uh, so the methylated spirits, the, what do you call it? Mineral spirits. Mineral spirits methylated for spirits. the North American people. Whatever you clean your brushes with, you clean the stain. Yeah, so any oil-based paints, although they use terps too. So I don't, turpentine, mineral turpentine? Is the right, the right um, word? One of those things that works. Yes, okay, so going over this again. And yes, so I'll show you how to do that. When I finish this stencil, I'll show you how to clean it off. And I'm just gonna dab a little bit more on here. But see, it's hardly anything, but I'm just going to press that off because I don't want it all to run underneath. Okay, and again, just rubbing really gently. So it's really different than using paint. And depending on the stain you use too. So I'm using the Fusions All-in-One Stain and Finishing Oil, which is an oil-based stain. The other way that I have done this is using paint and creating a stain from your paint. Have you ever done that before? I've um, used paint. So for example, the coal black, the Fusions coal black that I used on the back of a chair here, or even a chocolate colored paint. You can create lovely wood stains by just adding a bit of water. And it really is a lovely stain idea. But then of course, you do have to seal it with a wipe on poly or something similar. So I'm just carefully maneuvering and working around, trying not to use too much. I'll just give you a peek there. How much pressure are you putting on, Sharon? Uh, not a lot. I'm 
not rubbing really hard, just kind of a light pressure and sort of pushing at the same time as I'm, I'm just being really careful because these little parts that are raising up, you don't want them to be moving around too much. And could you yep. use your brush for that? Uh, you could, but my worry is that the brush is going to seep too much underneath because with stain, like I said before, when I was experimenting on the back side of this chair last night, I found it really easily bled under. Let me see if you can see that here. There's just a tiny weeny little bit of bleed right there. Can you see that? And so I don't want that. So I've got to go really slowly to make sure I don't get that. So what I'm doing is blotting, sort of blotting it on and then rubbing really gently so it's not moving the stencil around at all. There you go. Is there another question? Somebody there? just asked, what are you applying the stain with and will you seal it later? I'm just applying it with a lint-free cloth and you can also use the microfiber <coughs> applicator pads um, that are just, they're a sponge as well. Um, but for this one, because I'm just using it for a stencil, not for a whole great big entire piece, these are really good to just drag over a nice long piece as well. Or you've, if, you've, if you're watching the replay and you missed our first part, I show you how I stained this background using the colour driftwood. So I'm just blotting there and you can see the stain starting to take shape. Guys, I just wanted to mention too about the Christmas stencils coming up. Coming soon to Essential Stencils. Have you placed your pre-order? You can pre-order and um, Essential Stencil will be adding that link to our live here. So look out for that link and it'll take you to the pre-order page where you can pre-order your Christmas stencils, which is very exciting. I've pre-ordered mine and I can't wait to get them. And I'm hoping to bring you some lives with some Christmas stencils, which will be so much fun. So make sure you find that Would water-based stain work the same? Yes, you could use a water-based stain also, but make sure that you're using a water-based stain on the base and a water-based stain for the stencil. <clears throat> Don't try and mix the two because, although it may work, but... Um, yeah, it's, they, do, they do work better if you work the, use the same material, like with like, you know what I mean? I heard you can use oil on water, but not water on oil. Oil on water would work, yes, but water based on oil, oil is always going to resist. Um, and also, I would still make sure that that water-based base was very, very dried, dried out. Like I said, I'm using this a little bit soonish so maybe this is this uh, black stain is possibly mixing a little bit with the gray stain it'll probably be a little bit more vibrantly black if that's such a thing mm. um, if i let this dry for a lot, lot longer but i think we'll still be happy with this result and it'll just be a really lovely conversation piece mm. for your entryway where else would you put this in your house where can you see this being used the stencil says it's so good to be home when using the stain, does mm -hmm. it penetrate the wood enough so that it doesn't wear off with constant use? Uh, yes. So you can, if you wanted to be really sure that you're going to seal it and protect it and make sure it's not going to, the stencil's not going to come off, you can use their clear, did I add that over mm -hmm. here, the natural um, stain and finishing oil, which has no colour in it. It's just pure uh, finish. Yep. Varnishy kind of. Thing. Okay, I think I'm finished. I'll have a little look to make sure that I've covered all the bases. Okay, ready for the reveal. Ta-da! And there we have it. So you can still see the wood grain through there. You can just see a tiny, I don't know what that speck is there. One here and one there. And I hesitate to do something with that, but let me just see. Well, it's, it's experiment time, right? I'm just going to grab a clean piece of this cloth. It's just a lint-free cloth that I've been using today and just see if that will blot up. No, nope, maybe not. Oops, just a little bit. But I don't want to drag this anywhere because it's like it's taking a while to, going to take a while longer to dry than this paint. So this stencil that I did over here is dry already. 
dry completely. But if I rubbed my hands on this, I, it's going to slide a little bit with the oil. So this one, you want to just completely let that, allow that to dry 24 hours at least. But if you want to use it, you probably should realistically leave it for 21 to 30 days of curing time to make sure it's completely cured. Now, like I said, the stain and finishing oils have a matte finish. Um, so it's not gloss or anything like that. You can see it's just that lovely matte finish. I'm just going to take my glove off here and let's see. Don't forget that we're going to be giving away some of these stencils today. Three, in fact. Have you Can't ever wait used adhesive to hold the stencil in place? No, I haven't. So I've heard about that. It's like a spray-on adhesive that you put on the back of the stencil, stick it in place, then do your stencil. But I'm not sure if that spray kind of gets on the thing. Let me know how that works. And um, yeah, that's a good tip. If anyone's done that before, let me know the pros and cons for using a spray adhesive on your stencils. All right, I'm just going to place this on the chair like so to give us an idea of how that's going to look. And I'll take some lovely, much better background photos of it later to show you what it's going to look like and probably get rid of that little piece of um, thing there. But I was going to show you how to clean off your stencils as well with the metho, we call it in Australia. The um, mineral spirits, right? Did I say it? I got it right that time. I think so. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Actually, you've got a whole bunch in this jar right here. So this is what we used. We just put a bit of the mineral spirits into here. I think it might be. And the terps is the other one that'll work. Mm. Um, but we just grab it on a cloth, dip a little bit in. And that's one lady's going to do one for there. her den, and the other one's going to do oh. one for her porch. A porch idea, yeah, front porch idea is great. Mm. Can you imagine that with a little uh, pot beside it? Good to be home. Or maybe for your college kids when they're coming home for Thanksgiving or Christmas. Mm. Have Broadly it in their room. There we go. So that methylated spirits, uh, mineral spirits is just... Wiping that off really easily right there. So the extra you can see is just a paint that I've done from previous stenciling. So anything else, but this, you could see the actual stain and finishing oil is being moved off there. And sometimes it gets on the back. So don't forget to make your back nice and clean. All right. And Julie told us the spray adhesive works well on wall work for the walls, but how, whoever's oh, paint is, to right. paint is better for signs and such. Okay. Try say wall work fast. Wall works fast. Oh. <laughs> okay, so that's our uh, finished item there. And I reckon I was going to, oh, that's right. I was just going to show you this other stencil that comes with it. Together is my favourite place to be. So these are for the prize winners today. Oop. <clears throat> those two stencils there and um, Celia are you ready to pick out some prize winners for our stencils today our stencil packs I am and I think I just unplugged something and Good. if you're a prize winner today we will contact you and we will let you know what your prize is so don't you worry about that we're going to write them all down, aren't we? We are you've got I them, write them down. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Roxanne Wellman Taylor Kathy Ventura and Belle A. Williams from Brisbane. Just one Brisbane. Oh, wow. So congratulations for, uh, who Roxanne. was it? Roxanne. Kathy. Kathy. And Belle. And Belle. Congratulations. You have won yourselves stencil sets today. So maybe you could make something like this, or maybe you could make something with your together is my favorite place to be. We had an idea for this, didn't we, Celia? We did. You can go and um, get ready to turn that off. And thank you so much for watching today. But I'm just going to show you another little project. You can use these for furniture and all sorts of projects like that. So imagine this one on here. Celia's painted this little lovely stool. Together is my favourite place to be. Uh, that's one of the ideas. Don't forget, guys, that uh, if you want to get the Christmas stencils, there's some lovely, beautiful uh, ones that you can make, ta Christmas tags, decorations with them, signs, Christmas signs, all sorts of fun things. There's even a Christmas front porch long sign. I can't wait to use some of those. So don't forget to click on the link to get your amazing percentage off. 
And Essential Stencils is posting that in the links very soon and now. And if you wanted a list of supplies that I used today, please type the word list into the comments and you'll get a list sent to you. Thanks so much for watching today. Until next week or next time, I'm Sharon from iRestore Stuff. Thank you so much for watching.